Good morning students. We are discussing on payment material and characterization. Today we will discuss one more material that is used in payment construction. The material is road aggregates. Now the first question arises where these road aggregates can be used. So the answer is road aggregates can be used in granular subbase and the base course. This subbase and base course are the course which is laid over the subgrade. So, in the base and the subbase course, the primary material we are using that is the aggregates. What is subbase or the granular subbase? Layer of broken stones, sand, gravel, mural of about 30 cm thickness is laid over the compacted subgrade is generally known as the granular subbase course. Sometimes in the subbase course, a layer of stabilized soil or the few selected granular soils is also used. In some places, the boulder stones or bricks are also used in the subbase course. So, to use this material in this particular course have some functionality so that that particular so that the motto of constructing this particular course can be obtained so what are the function of this subbase course the main function is to increase the bearing capacity of the subgrade also to provide the structural strength to the pavement structure. Subbase course also improve the drainage property of subgrade by arresting the capillary water in particular course. This course also prevent the subgrade soil that penetrating into the base course. And furthermore, this particular layer also protect the subgrade from the frost action. So these are the function of subbase course and that's why we are providing this subbase course with the aggregate so that it can fulfill this particular functionality. The next course that is the base course. Base course is generally laid over the subbase course. Now the base course is the layer which is immediately below the bearing course and sometimes it can be laid over the subgrade also. The base course consists of local soft aggregates, stabilized soil, water bound macadam, bricks, slag etc. So these are the material which can be included or which can be added for constructing the base course. The general thickness of this course is varies from 10 cm to 30 cm. The width of this base course is generally kept 30 cm more than the width of the bearing course so that the extra width can bear or can easily transfer the load in the below layers. The base course should fulfill few requirements and those are that the particular base course should have the considerable thickness so that the wheel load can be properly distributed to the subbase and the subgrade, subgrade course which are just below the subbase course. The base course should have that adequate structural stability because to resist the vertical pressure that is coming on the road surface. Also, the base course should have sufficient density to resist the consolidation pressure and have the enough resistance to the wearing action. So, these are the general requirements that a particular base course should fulfill. The function of the base course is 
to distribute the load that coming from upper layers to the sub base and the subgrade force this is for particularly for the flexible pavement also the function of base force is to increase the bearing capacity the pavement if we talk about the rigid pavement then in the rigid pavement the function of the base force is to prevent the mud pumping also to protect the particular subgrade force from the frost action it also provide the labeled surface while you are applying the bearing course that is the immediate course after or that is the following course after the base course so to construct the bearing course the base course will provide the labeled surface this is what about the layers but we are using aggregate into it so let's discuss on that material that how road aggregates can be used and why particular aggregates is used for the construction so the next topic that is the road aggregates aggregates are the prime material that are used in the flexible pavement construction aggregates bear the stresses due to wheel load that are coming over the pavement and also they have capacity to resist the wear due to the abrasive action of moving traffic they are also used in the rigid pavement construction in the bituminous concrete construction or if in case we are using any any bituminous mixes construction in this particular work also the aggregates can be used also the aggregates can be used in the, as a granular base course to provide the superior pavement layer and because of all these reasons the property of the aggregates are of considerable importance for the highway construction the most of the road aggregates are prepared from the natural rocks now most of the road aggregates are prepared from the natural rocks and those are we can consider as a gravel aggregates and the sand now gravel aggregates are small rounded stones of different sizes which are generally obtained from river beds sand is a fine aggregate that is obtained from the weathering of rock the property of the parent rock from which the aggregates are formed that is depend on the properties of the constituent materials and the nature of bond between the aggregate particles or we can say the bonding between that parent rocks based on the origin the natural rocks are classified as a igneous as a sedimentary rocks or and as a metamorphic rocks when we are talking on aggregates or we are talking on the uh, selection of the aggregates how the particular aggregates can be selected for the particular construction so in that selection the texture plays the important role or plays the important factor that affect the property of particular rock or the aggregates the aggregates are specified based on the few properties and the properties are the grain size the shape of that aggregate the texture of that aggregate and the most important that is the gradation of aggregates the aggregates now aggregate sizes is measured by sieve analysis by doing a sieving of aggregates through the various square sieves of successively decreasing size the required aggregate sizes are chosen to fulfill the desired gradation so as per the size of the aggregates 
the aggregates are classified into few categories so the next topic is the classification of road aggregate if we talk about that the classification based on the size of aggregate is classified into two categories and those are the fine aggregate and the coarse aggregate so let's talk on this aggregates the first thing is what is fine aggregates how we can classify the fine aggregates so the fine aggregates can be classified with the size of an aggregate lower than the 4.75 millimeter those particular class of aggregate is known as the fine aggregates well uh, as an example we can say the sand is generally considered to have the lower size that size is about 0.07 millimeter so the sand is a fine aggregates a particular aggregate whose size in between 0.06 millimeter to 0.00 millimeter is generally classified as a seed now the particles or we can say the aggregates whose size is smaller than 0.002 millimeter that is generally termed as a clay if we talk about the fine aggregates then in the fine aggregates buckling is seems more into fine aggregates if we talk about the fine aggregates that there is more possibility of buckling in the fine aggregates generally this fine aggregates are used as a filler material whose work is to fill the voids which remains after the bonding of the coarse aggregate general example of the fine aggregates are as discussed below that sand silt clay or sometimes few crust stones whose size is less than 4.75 mm are comes into the fine aggregates now let's talk on the coarse aggregates how it can be classified the size of aggregates larger than the 4.75 mm is called as the coarse aggregate the graded coarse aggregates are described by the nominal sizes the nominal size of this coarse aggregates are 40 mm 20 mm 16 mm and 12.5 mm for an example a graded aggregate of nominal size 12.5 mm what it means it means that the bunch of aggregate in which the most of the aggregates are pass the 12.5 mm c so those particular aggregates are known as the 12.5 aggregates it is not compulsory that all the aggregates particles should have the size of 12.5 but the aggregates who passes the c of 12.5 mm is termed as a nominal size aggregate of 12.5 mm size now 80 mm size is considered as the maximum size of aggregate which can be used in the construction now using the large possible maximum size that will result in the reduction of the cement content also it will reduce the water requirement with that also reduce the drying shrinkage however the maximum size of aggregates that can be used in the construction that can be limited or that may be limited by the thickness of the section spacing of reinforcement the clear cover the mixing process and also in placing techniques how you are placing the material in which the aggregates are mixed now based on the strength property the coarse aggregates are divided into two parts as a hard aggregate and the soft aggregate now what is hard and what is soft aggregates generally for the wearing coarse to provide the superior pavement 
the hard aggregates are more preferred because it can resist the abrasion and having the maximum crushing effect or that can have the minimum crushing effect of heavy traffic load so that it can maintain the pavement. The hard aggregates have also the property of resisting the adverse weather condition. In case of low cost road construction, the soft aggregates can be used in the lower layer pavement construction and those lower layers are subgrade sometimes or you can sometimes use those aggregates into the base subbase course as of the soft aggregates include murum kankar laterite bricks aggregates and the slags so this can be used as a soft aggregates so with this i'm concluding this lecture i hope students you understand the topic thoroughly Thank you so much students for your kind attention.